Hey everybody, I'm Dr. John Willardson from TrustImplants.com. Today I'd like to go over a case, a very interesting case. <clears throat> Patients who have been wearing dentures a long time. My grandmother, rest her soul, Granny B, she, uh, I, I only remember her as wearing dentures. Um, she was a beautiful lady, but I remember when I was a little kid and she would take her teeth out. And it just shocked me because her, you know, now I'm used to this as I see it on my patients all the time, but you know, her lips were collapsed in. She just looked old. She looked at least 20 years older when she would take her teeth out. And she had a great sense of humor, so she would like to play around with this. And, you know, we would be talking with her and she'd turn away and pull her teeth out. And all of a sudden we were kind of <laughs> in shock as a, you know, five, six year old kids. And, um, and so I've always thought about that when I'm treating my patients who are wearing dentures or edentulous, we call it. And so um, when I can give patients who are wearing dentures a fixed set of teeth, it's a life-changing procedure. Um, like with my Granny B, uh, I am certain, I never really saw an x-ray because she died when I was actually still in dental school, but... Um, I would imagine that the bone was completely gone by the time she was probably in her 30s or 40s. That too is relatively common for patients who are wearing dentures. And so what do you do? Um, here's a case that the patient is, uh, had, has been in dentures uh, probably for 50 years, I would say at least. In the upper jaw, the bone is completely gone. And so this patient had gone to like 16 other doctors, every single one of them had said she's not a candidate. And it's not that uh, here at Trust Implants, you know, I'm anything special, but we do have the means and the knowledge and the ability to regenerate this bone so that the patient can have implants, which is what we did in her case. It just takes some planning and knowing um, the steps that need to happen in order to regenerate the bone. And so our, our sweet patient here who decided to move forward on this case, you know, again, you can see the defect in the bone. If we were to look at an x-ray, and it's hard to tell on, on some of these x-rays because you have to kind of know what you're looking at, but right here uh, would be bone, but there's none. And so let's go through this case. Here's a panoramic view and you can see how thin the bone gets down here on the lower jaw. The upper jaw, there's literally no bone at all. We're talking in the, in the front part of the upper jaw, probably three millimeters of bone at the most. And so I have to do a lot of bone regeneration, bone grafting procedures. And so how do I do that? So here it is looking like a bird's eye view at the mouth. You can see there's obviously no teeth and there's no bone. And so, and this is a good example. So this is this model here, and you can see this is where the bone needs to be. That's where I need it to go. And that's, we're talking about 15 millimeters of bone that we need to regenerate in order to place, you know, at, at least a 12 or 15 millimeter, 13 millimeter implant. And so I've got my work cut out for me on this case, but this is where it starts. We take our models, I start to design, it's like, it's like I'm an architect. I have to figure out, okay, where are the problems and how can I resolve those problems? The problem here, there's literally no bone. How do I solve that problem? I have to design her, her jaw and grow that bone according to the design that I've created. And this is the first step. And then after I've made my uh, design, I take a model that I've created the new ridge out of and I do what's called a titanium mesh tray. It's like a, a, a very hard mesh tray that I've, I've formed and molded to this newly designed ridge, comparing the old ridge to the new ridge. And you can see how I've got now vertical height here. I have vertical height, the bone where it was missing before. And now I'm gonna use these trays in surgery to use a material, bone morphogenetic protein, BMP. And so we used a combination of the patient's autogenous or the patient's bone with BMP. And this is how we were able to successfully place eight dental implants in her mouth, whereas before she was told she's not a candidate. 
So here the time mesh tray with the BMP is all in place. I screw the titanium mesh into place with the BMP in the place. And then the key here is getting what's called primary closure, getting that tissue to close over so that the uh, tray, you know, if this becomes exposed, the chance of failure goes way up. And fortunately in her case, we did not have any exposure of the tie mesh. I don't know if you can see this image, but this is after about nine months of healing, actually six months of healing. And you can see here that ridge. It's a nice big fat ridge. Now I've got bone that I can put, and I'm actually on this side, I'm placing my implants. And on the left side, you can see that I've got a nice ridge to work with. And so here we have all of the implants in place to go from this, mo this ridge here, designing the ridge to our new ridge, and then having that bone regenerate is such a beautiful thing. I love this. Um, I love that the, our bodies and you know, God has made such an, such an incredible organism, our body, and how it heals and how this bone regenerates. And I love to see this because it, it's, it's very predictable if it's done correctly. And so here I've got all of these implants in place, eight in total, and here's an x-ray. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight implants and, and a ridge that literally was non-existent. By providing this patient with this fixed prosthesis, this is kind of the process of making it. I have to design the aesthetics, the bite, the vertical dimension, which is this distance between her nose and chin. I have to go through all those steps in order to ultimately accomplish my end goal, which is creating a fixed prosthesis for this patient. And I ended up restoring the lower as well as putting implants on the lower jaw. And, and this solved this 50-year-old problem for this patient. And so we, here's the x-ray. So this is with the implants in place. Here's the x-ray of the titanium mesh in place. And then um, this is part of the process of fabricating the teeth to the newly designed ridge and placed implants. You know, my advice would be to, you know, if this is an issue for you and you're considering having implants done, my first set of advice is if you're wearing dentures, don't wait because you don't want to get to the point where there's no bone left because this is a very expensive bone graft. The bone graft alone is about $30,000. Um, or if you're losing your teeth, make sure that the doctor that's taking the teeth out or uh, you know, that there's a graft going into wherever there's a hole when you pull the tooth out, put bone in. You don't want to just pull the tooth and let that n and not graft that site because the bone will resorb and that's what happened with, to my granny B. I'm sure they just yanked her teeth out and just said, okay, uh, here's your dentures and good luck, you know. But nowadays we don't have to deal with those things. We can graft, we can regenerate the bone, regenerate the ridge, and it's best to do it at the time of extraction. So when the doctor pulls the tooth out, make sure that they do a bone graft at that time. That helps preserve the ridge because you, you don't want to go through all these steps. We can do it and it's great and I love to do it. But it's not an ideal, you know, financially, a lot of times it's prohibitive for a lot of patients. So here is the uh, prosthesis. This is just the temporary version of her final uh, fixed zirconia prosthesis. And so here it is. It's, this is just temporary. So there's some color discrepancies that I'm working on. But you can see we are taking this patient from where 16 other doctors had said, you know what, uh, sorry, miss, you know, ma'am, you're not a candidate for dental implants. And she had resolved to uh, just being stuck with her denture for the rest of her life. But fortunately, she made it into my practice and, um, and we have been successful in, in finishing up her case. And she will tell you, this is a life-changing procedure. She will never go back to the denture that she had suffered with for 50 years. So my advice, those patients who are wearing dentures are losing their teeth, you know, consult with a qualified surgeon and, um, and somebody who can help you on the path to getting this problem resolved. And like I say in all of my uh, videos, it is truly life-changing. And so take those steps and find out, gain information, gather as much information as you can, and then make the decision and move forward on it because it truly will help in so many aspects in your confidence, not to mention your digestion. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Willardson, and this is TrustImplants.com.